for your time today. I appreciate it. This was such a fun ride for me for a lot of different reasons. The, the fun, the self-discovery, all of those things were amazing. Stephanie, I'm going to begin with you. When you think of your own personal journeys that you've had in your life and how your friend group may have helped you with that, what do you think your friend group has in common with this friend group that helped you along that self-discovery journey? I think that my friend group and similar to this friend group, which by the way, my friend group is very different and we do very different things for fun. <laughs> um, I think it's that ride or die-ness, you know, of like, no matter what happens, I will be there by your side. I love a grand adventure. Like off we go, anything you need, I am there. Um, that, that sort of bond of togetherness of being in the trenches, I think we both both my fiction both the joyride friend group and my friend group really share although we are also real friends in real life <laughs> I love that Sabrina over for you I think of my friend groups and how some of them may represent parts of my personality that I think that I need more of maybe I need more extroverts maybe I need more comedy and I feel like all of you reflected different parts of of um, Audrey's personality that she needed more of. Is that a fair assessment? And what do you think this these friends do for her that makes her a better human being? Yeah, I think Audrey is someone who always, you know, who struggles with how she is like, not quite one thing or the other. And having this friend group that, I mean, Kat, Lolo, Dad, I have all such different personalities, but they all find a way to love each other and accept each other. And I think you know, in an abstract level, that's like what she needed to experience was that like, you know, you don't have to be one way you everyone contains multitudes and there's room for all of that. And like, I think Lolo teaches her to really embrace her uniqueness and Kat is someone, you know, they'll do like a little acapella, like it's okay to be posh. It's okay to like be ambitious and want things. And then Deadeye sort of reflects back to Audrey. Like I see, I think Deadeye sees Audrey's like love and care for her friends. Like she is so deeply loyal underneath you know, some of the quibbles and, and the hard choices that she's juggling. To, to kind of follow up on that with, with Deadeye, the irony that the name is Deadeye and people will find out, you know, why your character has that name. But Deadeye almost is like an all seeing eye in a sense and speaks more for us, the audience in a way that the other characters do not. Is that, what was your impression of Deadeye and what she serves? when you got to reading the script and shaping who Dead Eye is? Dead Eye originally read a little colder and wasn't always like this person that had this big heart and cared a lot about friendship, but it was something that sort of, as we were collaborating, it started to make more and more sense that that's who Dead Eye was. And I totally think you're right that Dead Eye really sees people. I think when I think about playing Dead Eye, I think about like a, a younger, more naive version of myself and maybe someone who wasn't normed into being like cool or, or like, like caring too much about what other people think. And so I think, that's why audiences connect is they like wear their heart on their sleeve with an earnestness that is so rare as an adult. Um, and so they're just really able to see things for what they are because they're not so clouded by like, I need to fit in, I need to do this or that or that to fit in. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, back over to you. I feel like everybody needs a cat. Everybody needs a fly home girl with the bomb job with, <laughs> with the hookups who can get us into any, any place. And even alongside with that, just visually, Kat is gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. Visually, where you guys are shooting is, is gorgeous. Can you tell me more about where you guys were shooting and the most enjoyable parts of playing Cat for you? We filmed most of the movie in Vancouver, um, beautiful Vancouver, all of it. All of the film was in Vancouver and I love Vancouver. <laughs> um, and you know, to be honest, in some ways, I mean, when I'm glammed up and doing interviews, I do feel a little bit more adjacent to Kat, but Stephanie in her real life is like so far. In fact, one of the biggest like bits was that I knew when I got the character of Kat, I wanted her to have long acrylic nails. And that is something like, I usually have dirt under my fingernails. Like I am just on like, you know, like to fix things, like to get my clothes dirty. But, um, 
you know, I would meet new people and I would be dressed in like car hearts, but I would have these crazy cat nails and I'd be like, I'm so sorry. This isn't me. This is just, I, this is what I do for my job. Um, but I will say, I feel like cat really taught me something because I think I used to, and this was also pre everything everywhere. And maybe she planted a little seed in me, but I, I think I always poo pooed people who wanted to be fabulous because I, you know, really pride myself on being grounded. But I think that it's so fun to be fabulous. It's so fun to like take care of your friends in that way or to just look good because why the hell not, you know? And so I really think that she, she taught me something about like life is short. So, you know, like level <laughs> up each and every so day. Ball out. Yeah. Ball out. <laughs> yeah. Ball out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I feel you. Do you know how many lotto dreams I have of winning a lotto and inviting people <laughs> to this mystery house that they don't know I bought? Be like, surprise, it's me. Shots for everybody. So I feel that completely. And they are wrapping me. Thank you so much for your time to both of you. I love the film. I laughed a lot. I got a little pretty tear a couple of times. It was really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. Take care.